Welcome back. A majority of Americans believe in God. A slim majority, but a majority. I believe in God. I hope you do. Uh, but that is up to each individual. A couple of weeks ago, during the early stages of the coronavirus, Vice President Pence, you know, of course, that he's running the uh, coronavirus task force, a picture emerged of him and his team engaged in a moment of prayer before a meeting. This was posted online. And what happened? Yep. He was bullied. He was harassed, made fun of. Oh, how ridiculous. And I thought, gosh, the criticism seems so ridiculous. So many people say they believe. Yet why would a brief moment of prayer be held up for such ridicule? I want to bring in Eric Metaxas, the well-known radio host and author, and also, I know, a believer in God. And I believe a, um, you became a Roman Catholic, sir, later in life. No, I never actually became a Roman Catholic. Or if I did, don't tell my parents. Okay. Listen, um, did you notice or do you notice that uh, any overt sign of religiosity or uh, faith is too often ridiculed? Oh, there's no question about it. When I saw the tweet, the Biden tweet, I just thought, thank God we have leaders who actually believe in God and who believe in prayer. The implication, and this is ugly, it's wrong, the implication is always if someone prays, that's all they're doing. That's complete nonsense. We know it's nonsense, right? God doesn't say to us, just pray and hide. He doesn't say that. We're supposed to work. We're supposed to do everything we can. We're supposed to be rational. You know, we believe in science. We believe in everything, but we're supposed to pray. The idea that a leader shouldn't pray publicly, I have to say, Abraham Lincoln, many of the people who mocked, you know, Pence forget that Abraham Lincoln, especially toward the end of his life, was a man of prayer. And he called that the whole nation would pray. He, he sent proclamations that the whole nation should fast and pray. That's Abraham Lincoln. We have tons of that in our history. So the idea that somebody shouldn't pray, somebody shouldn't pray in public is absurd. And frankly, those folks don't even understand the Constitution or the separation of church and state. That's only to keep the state, which is usually secular, uh, and self-serving away from the people in the churches so they can have the freedom to pray. So the whole thing's a misunderstanding. And I think that if you don't pray when you're facing something like this pandemic, my question is, wh what do you, you know, what is your solution, Mr. Atheist, for example, or Mr. Agnostic? What do you tell people? Um, I don't think they really have much to say. And so sometimes they just get threatened by somebody praying. It makes them feel uncomfortable yeah. and probably insecure. So mm -hmm. I, I think we need more people praying in the Oval Office. You know, just about everybody, you see those tweets. And quite frankly, people are a little over the tweets, but they'll send their thoughts and prayers in the aftermath of some calamity. Uh, and a lot of people do that, uh, just kind of perfunctory. They put it out there. No one really gets on their case, but the moment you see some somebody praying in public, somehow it's fair game. And I believe he's an evangelical. I think uh, Mike well, sure, Pence is an sure evangelical. Is. And, and I mean, he comes out of a Catholic background. He's an evangelical. But, but here's the issue. Most people know God is real. But there are many people who say they believe in God. But the real question is, do you? Do you pray? Do you know that when something like this coronavirus happens, that God has your back? Do you trust him? Do you know that one day you're going to face him? I mean, things like this force us to get serious. Do you really believe? Or is it a lot of, of religious blather? And when push comes to shove, you don't believe. And I think that people who are uncomfortable with somebody like Pence praying, it, it just shows that they have no idea what they believe. Even if you had a real conversation with them and sat down, I, I think at the end of the day, they'd be embarrassed because they don't they have no idea why they're on the planet, where they're going, what happens when you die. You know, that's not a good place to be. It is interesting, as I think we need faith more than ever. Religious institutions are uh, some of them running scared. Uh, <laughs> one of the places where people congregate and you're not supposed to congregate anymore. Right. I mean, we're going to get through this, but it is uh, an unfortunate uh, aspect of all of this. Well, listen, first of all, church buildings are not the church. The church is the people called out by God to be his people. So wherever you are, yeah. if you believe in the God of the Bible, you are the church and you can get together with a couple of friends and pray with them. That is the church. That was the early church. That will always be the church. Whether you get together in a building with a thousand other people is another story. 
uh, but we need to pray. And, and here's the issue. We need to know God hears our prayers. We need to know it. We shouldn't hope it in vain. We should know when you pray to God, he hears your prayers. There's no question about it. I love it. Eric Metaxas, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Stay with us.